Hey, hey, you're watching DS Tech Media, and this is my list of must-have apps and add-ons for Linux. So don't go anywhere, at least until after my stupid intro. Hello, hello, you're watching DS Tech Media, and this is my channel, I'm Jay. I do lots of technology-based stuff, especially open source and Linux, and today I'm going to be showing you my must-have list of apps and add-ons for Linux. So first off, full disclaimer, I wanted to mention that I'm currently running Ubuntu 18.04 with gnome shell so some things are going to be different for other distros but most of the things i'm covering here are going to be available for any distro that you're going to be using the exception of course is going to be genome shell extensions and there's several in this list but i'm going to try and do them all at once so the first thing that i always install on just about any linux distro that i'm using is the weather i have to have an app for checking the weather it's just something i do and when i started using ubuntu the first thing i ever installed was this application called my weather indicator my weather indicator gives you a little tray icon up here with your temperature and it also gives you like a little indicator of what the weather's like outside right now it's just a little moon icon because there's no clouds where i'm at and if we go to preferences here you can opt to show the widget here you can have that always on top you can also not show the widget at all and not show the indicator at all and you can also change it between uh, various different styles so that's full that one's called another one this one is the simple this one is the super there's the super clock all in one and this one's just called a clock you can uh, have two locations you can also switch between the weather underground yahoo open weather map and World Weather Online. Weather Underground and World Weather Online require you to register and get API keys for them. You can of course change your units from metric to imperial. And they have this awesome little switcher for light or dark icon. You can auto start this when you boot up and you can change your update interval. And when you click the icon, you get all your little details here. So Let's say I don't want the widget taking up my screen and I just want to click over top to see what's going on. We've got temperature, pressure, humidity, feels like, the dew point, the wind, cloudiness, and the current status which is clear. It shows you dawn, sunrise, sunset, dusk, waxing crescent is the phase of the moon. You also get this cool moon phase calendar. There is a forecast map which you can add different stats to for your area. You've also got the uh, evolution forecast, temperature, humidity, and cloudiness. And you can download as PNG, JPEG, PDF, or even an SVG. My weather indicator is pretty awesome. Kind of a all-in-one little suite for weather type thing. So if you want to install my weather indicator, it's not in the default repositories for Ubuntu. However, if you go to Atario, my weather indicator on GitHub. They do have a very convenient PPA archive. And of course, you can always build it from source. So up next is another weather app. Well, it's actually a GNOME extension. And if you're going to be using GNOME extensions, you're going to need to install GNOME tweaks. You can do that with sudo app install GNOME hyphen tweaks. We go to extensions here. The one we're looking at is called open weather. And this is the dialog for it. You can switch between open weather map or dark sky dot net and set your refresh timeout for current weather and for current forecast. You can also change where it appears in your panel right center is where I keep it and of course left brings it over here 
symbolic icons you can turn those on or off and it changes it from color to black and white this changes to whether it shows you the temperature in the panel or not you can set it to show your conditions in the panel or you can have conditions in forecast center forecast and this is what the extension looks like personally i feel like this should be in ubuntu by default and in order to get this extension, we can go to the Ubuntu Software Center and we can go to the add-ons, shell extensions. You can also go to extensions.genome.org. And if you have the plugin, which comes pre-installed with Firefox, you have to add it to Chrome or Brave or whatever, but you can find weather pretty easily with a search. So let's go ahead and get the other genome extensions out of the way. CPU frequency is another extension that I highly recommend, which comes with all of these different little options here. And it gives you this tab here. And it allows you to adjust your minimum and maximum and cores online. You also can change power profiles, governor for performance or power save. They're a really awesome extension. I believe I had to install this one manually, but I will leave links in the description of the video. Up next is Dynamic Panel Transparency, and this extension allows you to adjust the way your panel behaves when you maximize or minimize windows on GNOME. So when I maximize a window, this panel becomes solid and then it becomes semi-opaque when I am not maximized. And you can adjust these to your liking. You can even change the uh, color. So I could do red. It also has text and icon shadowing. You can have primary and secondary colors to use when a window is maximized or when the overview is visible basically something that's built into elementary's pantheon but i glad to be able to add this functionality to gnome part of the reason why i love gnome is i think the extensions are kind of the way to go although they are sort of a monolithic design which kind of goes against the principles of linux but for convenience we make sacrifices Another extension that I cannot live without is called Unite. And Unite is all about making GNOME behave more like Unity. Basically lets you configure different things about the GNOME shell, like uh, autofocus on new windows. You can show the desktop name in the top bar. You can give custom name to your desktop, hide activities button, hide window title bars show window title in app menu, show window buttons in top bar. Lots of little things you can just play around with. Just thought I'd mention that one. I also love show desktop from overview. And basically what that does is when you hit the super key, the windows button, you get the overview. If you click outside of a window, it gives you a clear desktop. And I think that's it for the GNOME extension. Another app that I highly recommend, especially if you're using a laptop with Linux, is Linrunner or TLP. And you can find everything about that at linrunner.de. I don't have that installed on this uh, system because it's a desktop. I'm not really that worried about power consumption or heat, but this is a definite must have for anyone using Linux with a laptop. Now I am interested in monitoring my temperatures and for that I use P-Sensor. And this is a little tool that lets you do lots of things like graph everything. You can also log things, enable different sensors such as motherboard, CPU and GPU with proprietary drivers. Look at your hard disk, CPU and memory usage. It also has a uh, preferences for your sensors. For me, it shows my CPU and GPU temperatures at all times. The official site for this is wpitchoune.net slash psensor. I'll be putting all these links 
in a document or a blog post rather that I'll be linking to in the description of this video if you want to check that out I'll probably be posting that on my hive blog so you'll be able to go there and just get all the links I'll have like a long form blog post about that these next two apps are also must-haves and they may only apply to Ubuntu and Debian based systems. One is the Synaptic Package Manager, which is available in the Ubuntu software store and the Ubuntu default repositories. I don't use this very often, but this is the way to go if you're dealing with more complicated packages or dependencies and maybe like even dealing with your drivers it gives you a lot more information than the ubuntu software center does and it's a lot easier to use for complex stuff with a lot of dependencies versus dealing with it in aptitude and apt in the terminal you can find just about everything in your repos with an aptic and you can also add ppas and etc and so forth speaking of ppas the next one is YPPA man and this is also not available in the default repos you can go to launchpad.net the web update team has it and you can add the PPA to your system this tool is for managing your PPAs you can remove purge update edit and list the packages of any PPA and as you can see I have a ton of them go here list packages and we can see all of the packages available in any PPA you've added to your system. You can even copy the link to your clipboard. You can search for Launchpad PPAs. You can manually add PPAs. You can set your Ubuntu version. And you can do manual or auto PPA purges. Under Advanced, we've got a bunch of features like the ability to scan and remove duplicate PPAs, import missing GPG keys, way to fix all of your GPG bad signature errors, can back up your repositories, restore your repositories from backup, re-enable working PPAs after you want to upgrade, and update release name in working PPAs. So it's also great for if you upgrade Ubuntu and it'll basically let you figure out which PPAs that you were using before are still going to work and get rid of the ones that don't. So I'm pretty obsessive about notes and this is notes up. It's a comprehensive note taking app. You can have notebooks and set bookmarks. It allows you to edit your notes via markdown even supports photos and everything else and of course you can export to pdf can change your fonts change your your themes it's got some formatting features here and you've got a few style sheets for different markdown editors and viewers but one of my favorite things about it is it stores all of your notes as an sqlite uh, database so you can go to decomp which is a configuration editor for GNOME based stuff and you go to org notes notes database and you can change where notes up saves your database I put mine in a Dropbox so that I always have it synced and it's a way to keep your notes in a very simple way because it's just one database file to install notes up you can find it at Philip Scott on github and it was originally made for elementary OS, so you can install it easily through their App Center. If you're not on elementary, it's available for OpenSUSE and Arch Linux, and you can also install it from a PPA. But be aware your results may vary, and it also requires the elementary OS PPA as it uses a newer version of the Granite library than Ubuntu ships with. I personally had to build it from source for Ubuntu 18.04, so this is really going to depend on which distro you're on for this, but I have to mention it as I absolutely love it. Another note taking app that I love is QOwn Notes, which you can get at qownote.org slash installation. They have instructions for just about everything. You can install it as a snap, a flat pack, an app image, and this is what it looks like. It has a ton of features and you can change the way it looks and the way it behaves. But if you're using Nextcloud or OwnCloud, you have the ability to sync it 
with your next cloud server, which gives you the ability to do things like note versioning, et cetera, and so forth. It has a ton of features like sharing notes, importing, exporting, et cetera, and so forth. It's kind of overkill when it comes to notes, but if you're a person who is obsessive about notes like I am, definitely would recommend it. Next up, and this is something that I don't think a lot of people always think of, Clipboard Manager. The one that I recommend is Copy Q, and it should be available in your repositories on Ubuntu. And if not there, it is available as a flat pack through Flat Help. It is literally overkill as a clipboard manager. It has tons of options. You can save SVGs, images, just about everything. If you're working with graphics and SVGs and PNGs, and it's really the way to go. You can even set how far back it saves and it basically creates a database of everything you copy and paste. It even has a notes function and lots of other options. It's a very comprehensive clipboard manager. If you don't need anything so extensive, there is also Diodon, which is more basic, should be available in your repositories. And it even has support for some plugins, etc. and so forth. For phone device integration, if you have an Android and you want to have more integration with your Android phone and your Linux desktop, there is KDE Connect for KDE based desktop. But if you're using a GNOME based desktop like I am, there is GS Connect. And to use either one, you need to install the KDE Connect Android app on your phone and also install the GS Connect extension into GNOME. And when it's enabled, you'll get a little icon up top here and it allows for all kinds of features such as sharing notifications from your phone to your desktop or from your desktop to your phone. You can send files wirelessly. There is a two-way uh, clipboard sync. You can control music or video that's playing on your desktop from your phone. You can use your phone as a touch input device. There's built-in uh, text messaging, so you can access your text messages. And another cool feature is the ability to locate your phone. definitely the best phone integration for Android and Linux. And I highly recommend Push Bullet Indicator. Once again, this has to be installed via a PPA. If you just do a Google search for Push Bullet Indicator, you should find this UbuntuUpdates.org. They have the installation instructions for it. It's available for Trusty Tar, Xenial, Bionic, and Focal. You also will need to download the Push Bullet app for your Android phone. And this is very straightforward. It allows you to send a note, a link, file, or an image. And you can have Push Bullet installed as a desktop application that's available. I have it installed on elementary. My new Pixel 4, my old Pixel. This was the web app. This is this computer. And this basically allows you to send this push to an individual device or all devices also allows you to show your last push. It's a very simple uh, setup. It's got some options here. Allow access, universal copy paste, auto start, icon light, reply messages, reply WhatsApp, reply tele telegram. And it's just the easiest way to get something from your Linux desktop to your phone if you're using Android and maybe also be available for iOS devices. I'm honestly not sure. 
Another cool Android connectivity app is Screen Copy, which I did a video just recently about Screen Copy, so I'm not really going to cover it here. But it lets you use your phone on your Linux desktop with your keyboard and your mouse. I'll put a link up top there if you want to check that out. As far as social media goes, there's lots of individual solutions out there. But I highly recommend this application, Franz. It's a universal social media manager, and it's got support for all of these uh, social apps. So WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Slack, Gmail, Skype, Telegram, Android Messages, Google Calendar, Discord, Hangouts, LinkedIn, Trello, TweetDeck, Office 365, Outlook, and Google Keep. And if you have those uh, social accounts, you can just sign into them with friends and they'll all be available right here in one convenient place i even have my push bullet here at telegram github skype twitter and of course facebook messenger you can find friends in your ubuntu software center and it's available as a flat pack as well friends is free to use the only limitation to the free version is that when you start it up you have to wait eight or nine seconds for it to load unless you purchase a supporter license. One last must-have app that I'd like to recommend is Feed Reader, a RSS desktop client. It works with Feedbin, Feedly, Fresh RSS, In a Reader, Local RSS, Nextcloud, Tiny Tiny RSS, the Old Reader, and you can install it as a flat pack or manually. And it lets you organize everything into different tags. You can sort things with stars and it has various settings for your views. So there's midnight, parchment, and spring. You can also change the overall theme between dark, GTK, and elementary. You can also link it to Telegram, Instapaper, and even your Twitter account. So you can share it in different ways. And it's probably my favorite native RSS reader for Linux. And that's what I got for you today. It's a bunch of different little things that I prefer for my do Linux setup. These are like my must have applications. But I think that this list is something that everybody can get something out of. Uh, let me know what you think of these. You have any other alternative recommendations or whatever, you know, let me know in the comments section below. As I said, I'll be linking to my Hive blog with all of the links about everything that I mentioned here. If you like it, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave a thumbs down. If you want more Linux stuff, please subscribe. I do tutorials, talk about mostly Linux. I do a lot of things about content creation and graphics design. I might even do some web design stuff. Currently in the process of publishing a guide to music and audio production on Linux. I thank you for watching and until next time I will see you in the next one.